Um, but they do go for Nyx Assassin, which I do think is a weaker hero against, you know, Visage's timings. Yes. I mean, there is the upside of this Nyx hero, that the combo with Dawnbreaker is pretty powerful. You get this 10 stun increase talent, and you just get chain stun. The Nyx hits you, stuns you, Dawnbreaker drops on you, and you just get chain stun for like five seconds. They full to zero you. So, I mean, we saw last game Tundra playing this more of this pickoff style, whereas I think Secret this game has much more of that than they did last game. So maybe, you know, being able to split the map a little bit more. You saw them sort of, you know, gridlocked at this 1k, 2k gold lead for quite some time. So maybe this Nyx Dawn gives them a little more global presence, a little more pickoff potential. Maybe that gives them the opportunity to, like, build more of this gold lead. If they have another good early landing phase. So I think this is going to be the hardest phase for Tundra because Tundra they have to decide what to show here. They go with Clockwork, which is definitely good against all these heroes, actually, because it is a solid support matchup. And then which core do they go with here? What do they want to address? Do you want to address this Dawnbreaker, which can go to multiple lanes? Do you just want to pick something that's just good in the game with Visage? Uh, you know, like, for example, they've played the CM uh, Chaos Knight lane a lot, and that's a very hard lane to beat. I can see CK. I can see Ursa. They want something to just go in the, the Roche pit, trying to abuse the Wraith Pact early. Like your Global's on cooldown, your Dawnbreaker ult's on cooldown. Just go in the pit, start getting the Roche ons up. I'm yeah. feeling CK. I'm feeling CK. CK? Yeah. I, I think it just fits their MO, you know? <laughs> Again, it's, it's, it's also true. summons, it's, it's illusions. Yeah, yeah. It's not a Naga Siren, but you still get to, to throw stuff out there. You could go Axe. The you can go Axe. <laughs> you know, you press BKB, you press Axe, you dispel global from everybody pretty, else. Pretty nice. Uh, pretty poggers, indeed. <laughs> Very poggers. That was for um, Quinn. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I mean, I think um, this... Like, Secret may have the more pickoff than they did last game, but in terms of just, like, raw single target damage... Okay, so they do go for the 9 hero. I mean, um... It's it's definitely it's not the worst of primal games. I wouldn't say it's the best either. It sort of has like back and forth matchups against a lot of these heroes. Um, I could see their ideology being, hey, Sp Secret has a lot of these magic damage, like not super scaling heroes, and we see you know potential carry options that could be good on 23. Like we just need to see that one extra pick. Maybe we get to see a lane, or we know the dawn's going. We know the carry matchup, and we get like this really powerful carry pick. And you know maybe they feel we're gonna pick nine zero anyway. It's gonna be some melee dude who's gonna like go do some stuff for us. He's gonna run in, so they're like, I just pick it now, whatever. They'll counter it sort of. Primal is not that easy to counter in lane, and we'll get this like slightly better carry pick that gives us you know a better game matchup as time progresses. I think it's pretty smart in a way because it fits in how they want to play the game on Tundra's side. So they want to open up Visage's lane right when he hits six. That's generally what they like to do with Zoo, this team. And Primal is one of the best hero at rotating to your lane. He's just fast with Trample. He's always going to get on top of somebody. And when Visage hits 6, with Primal Beast coming in there, if he's not too far behind in lane, which is one of the weaknesses of Visage, um, they can pretty much kick out anybody. So I want to see what Secret addresses here. I think they'll pick their mid hero. Okay, Angolier. Very, very good against all of Tundra's heroes, and I think it gives them that oomph that Secret sort of needed. Like, they want some dude who goes in and bam, slap, like, it's it's something an oomph to it. Because they have a lot of, like, casual magic damage, you know, some little bits here and there, and now they have, like, something more impactful that goes in, doesn't care about Wraith Pact, um, Tundra has all this magic damage and just absolutely nothing to Pango. Like, it is a very, very good Pango game. Five seconds I like this Pango Dawnbreaker dual core. Like, I think these are the types of heroes you want versus Tundra. Team heroes Secret. that can fight early, Time you don't fall behind on the map, deal with the lanes, deal with the skirmishing. At the same time, you're happy going late game with them too in a five on five ball scenario where the damage is going to be enough to cut through the Wraith Pack pipe scenario, whatever you're dealing with. Uh, I also think this Nyx Primal Beast interaction is like very weird. So I think we've seen it a lot this tournament. Like when you press BKB on this hero is the one thing that I think isn't always super obvious in a lot of the fights. Like you BKB before you charge in, are you just charging in? You're getting carapist. Is something weird happening to your hero, right? You have a global. Like if you BKB early and you get global, then your ult is screwed. So this prime, I don't think this primal beast initiation is that easy for him in a way. I think it's, it's kind of murky to me. I, I do like the Pangolier, like you guys said. I do think it's it's mainly about this Pangolier uh, answering the pressure from the Visage and this Primal Beast, because I think he's going to want to match them. So if they're going to go somewhere together, this Pangolier is exactly the hero you want that can deal with that lane. He can go there, you know, with Dawnbreaker ulting in, you can actually fight them. You can fight their timing. And, you know, like I said, this is Landota. It's about fighting, right? Even Tundra last game, you know, they, they push all these waves. But to what end? They want to be able to fight. They want to be able to see somebody and start casting spells, start poking them. Uh, and it's again, it's a similar thing, right? They have Clockwork with the Vision, the Visage. It's, it just fits their MOs for both of these teams. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, and we can see Secret this game with another smart ban. I think banning the CK like you were talking about. It, you know, it's just like very, very comfort. 
And it's sort of an interesting dynamic whenever you play a team that has such set in stone heroes, is you can sort of get in this thing where like, hey, we can counter this hero, but they also really like it. So do we want to just ban it to put them out of their comfort zone? And so you can sort of go back and forth on that. And it seems like Secret has fallen much more into the camp of, hey, maybe, you know, it's not the greatest CK game. It's against Pango and Dawn. It's like, eh, it's, it's okay, you know, but they really like it. So we're just going to ban what works for them instead of trying to ban the most ideal hero, which I think is a pretty good ideology against Tundra. Trying to think of this last Tundra hero here. Maybe a Darkseer. It is pretty interesting, right? Because Secret upgraded their second phase to all carry bands, as opposed to last time they placed up against him. It means so many Skeeter heroes are out of the pool. Yeah, Tundra really gone. trusted that Skeeter's got something left. I mean, there's yeah. Wraith, King, and Ursa. Those are like the two that come to mind. I mean, this team is almost always picking something that just goes Ten in, seconds, really? takes all the attention, gives vision to the rest of their lineup causes chaos, and of course, you if you can get something with nice lane synergy with CM, you're going to feel a bit better about potentially abusing this Nyx. Yeah, I mean, this is the risk of saving your carry for last pick, is if there's, you know, 15 more billion heroes, carry, you know, carry heroes banned, then you can end up with, you know, questionable options, and you're, you come out and you're like, are we really happy with this? You have to think about their counter pick as well, and is that going to mesh properly? It's, it's not a tricky, or it's not an easy pick. Yeah, I'm struggling to think what he's going to want to play here because there's always going to be some kind of counter pick, so it has to be something he's happy with. Ursa, okay, Terrorblade. When in doubt? <laughs> Terrorblade out? <laughs> Terrorblade out. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking, I was just looking. I was looking at anyone in the chat. <laughs> Bust out the TV. Um, I will say, Terrorblade is fairly strong in lane. There are not too many lanes that you can't, you know, at least survive to the point where you can go jungle. But... You know, it's not Five an incredible TV game. It's an okay TV game, right? You have, you're playing against Nyx and Sound, so you want to push these waves. Again, it, it just fits with their style. Push waves with summons, illusions, uh, and find the fight. Yeah, I mean, I do think it also gives them this raw damage. When you're against Dawnbreaker and Pangolier, like, you want some massive, you know, high DPS dude for when this Pangol runs in. Like, he can't just roll and have a free game, you know? Like, if he, once his roll ends, like, he's going to get focused on and blown up by the TV right clicks. Like, that matchup can be very two-sided. Yeah, there's a lot that can jump this terribly and make his game hard, and there's not a lot that protects him. I feel like last game we had all of those saves, all of those fight resets coming out. This game is different, right? Tundra does not have a single bailout spell. If you're just all in this Terrorblade, you global on top, who's doing anything to bail him out of the fight? He dies, so much of your damage goes away. We've seen a lot of games where this Primal Beast, this hero doesn't just do it all on his own, right? Uh, and now you have Drow added to the mix, a hero that Terrorblade has issues gap closing or man fighting in late game scenarios. And what are the best killers at TB too, right? Just strikes yeah. through all that base armor. Yeah. I think this is the, this looks to me the most doable game in terms of bringing Tundra down. Like if you're gonna bring this team down and beat what they're doing, this game to me looks like the most doable. But are they actually going to be able to do it? Fly, what are you feeling? I'm going to go with Secret. Uh, again, I was wrong last time, but, you know, this this is looking pretty hopeful. I do think this is a, a pretty good Draw Ranger game. I do like the Pangolier and how they're going to set up the fights with uh, Nyx Assassin. It's not as simple for Tundra to completely play out the fights. Like uh, SVG said, they don't have the save. That was, that was what changed everything for me last game. So I'm going to go with Secret. I am also going to go secret. I, my one worry is this uh, off lane for Tundra, I think, is a lot stronger than it was in the last game. And Drow Silencer is a lane that can get out of control very quickly. Suddenly there's a Birdman taking all your towers, and you're very sad. So He's going to have to lane the Silencer against the Crystal Maiden. I'm pretty sure they're going to do Nick yeah. Drow top. That's what I'm feeling, at least. But then they're breaking the Rezo Zyak, uh combination, so maybe not. And yeah, you're throwing Nyx potentially into Clock Visage, which isn't much fun for him either. That's so, true. Who does go down there and tank it up? Maybe you just dodge entirely? Is there like an aggro option? It's not amazing, but yeah, I mean, use it to some degree. I think Secret, honestly, they just want to get out of lanes. I don't think they need to yeah. win lane super hard here. It's like they just survive, get their course levels and farm. They get into that mid game. I think they're going to be pretty happy. Again, best chance I've seen. All right. Secrets versus Tundra. Game two is almost ready to go, but we got to check up the man on stage, Slacks, has got Heen for a last minute interview. Thank you so much, everybody. I am here with Heen from Team Secret. First chance to talk to you. I mean, so much time in the offers. My goodness gracious. Uh, sir, a very aggressive draft coming out here from Tundra. Pretty scary stuff. A little bit more defensive on your side, would you say, or are you going for just as much offense on this one? Oh, I think we're trying to aim for a balanced draft, especially because we're a second pick. You don't want to you know, rush, have to, um, you know, out-tempo them to win the game. We can make mistakes and still be in the game. Last game, it kind of felt like 
um, the Naga was more of a problem than we had anticipated. So after a certain, like a few mistakes, it just, uh, I could feel the frustration in our players' um, comms. So. All right. Well, it looks like that this one might not be as frustrating. We'll have to find out as we go straight in the game. The boys are ready to play. Throw it back to our casters. All right. I love the fact that he pointed out to, like, listening in on the comms, he was able to pick up some of the frustration from some of his players. I mean, that just did not look like a fun game to play for a Secret. With that many saves and that much split pushing, it just felt like everything that they tried to do was immediately stymied. So, this time around, I mean, you pointed out early on, there aren't those kind of saves. There's still the split pushing, there's still going to be Visage Familiar, still going to be Illusions running around, but no saves. They can actually go in and try to kill something and probably actually succeed. Which is a big deal when you have high committal lineups. Last game was a pretty high committal lineup for them. They have a lot of big ults. They have to drop them. Once they're dropped, if it gets reset, there's not a second round until, you know, 70 minutes when you have refreshers, of course. Yeah. But, you know, this game, it's a similar story to some degree, right? You have this global, you have this Donald, you have the Pangolier ult. Once these spells get committed, you are locked into that fight. So you need to be making sure you're getting a big kill out of them. And yeah, no saves, a lot less gunk on the map. That's what I'm saying. Like, this Tundra Trap, it's very much up their alley. And this team has been... Arguably the most dominant team at this tournament. Yes. So if there's a time you, you can make the god bleed, I feel like this is it. Battle. 12 wins in a row for Tundra now. They have been hot, hot, hot. Coming off the group stage, going into playoffs. And now they are just one win away from a grand final appearance. Absolutely amazing, especially for, I mean, we talked about the matchup. Let's just talk about the captains versus captains. I mean, we've got 11 time TI attending, just absolutely the goat the of, of captains, begins. puppies versus Snakey. First time at TI as a captain. He's been here before, but this time around, he's the one calling the shots, right, Avery? It's a different story entirely. I mean, he has always been a, a pseudo captain on every team he's been on. <laughs> yeah. uh, this guy talks a lot and he talks often, so it's a familiar role for him, but yeah, the pressure's on and they're handling it magnificently, right? One really game are. away from that grand final. You're already pretty happy almost regardless of that outcome. Already a pretty good start as well. Getting some trades out, well. Snaking, he's not gonna be happy about having a TP on Maiden. It's like the worst five to have the TP to lane on. You yeah. have your mana pool. Pushes him down a triple mango, lost some in. So, secret, any little start they can get off these lanes is nice. And uh, like what I was talking about, they did end up putting the Nyx down here, swapping that silencer up towards the Crystal Maiden. So trying to take advantage of this uh, Dawnbreaker silencer lane. You sacrifice a little by putting Nyx down here, but honestly, he wasn't gonna do a lot top. Sure. And you know, this Tundra off lane, they pull waves a lot. So if you're gonna throw something in a random lane and hope to get out of it, it's probably this lane to some degree. The pull action already on time and on point. Yep, and I almost wonder like, secrets, they could have been doing some, some of their own pulling. Meta was popped early by Skeeter, but now it's down. They're immediately gonna start getting a bit aggressive, missing out on that uh, last hit though. It's an interesting matchup. Nisha versus Nine, Pango versus Primal Beast. I think we actually saw this maybe a couple times in uh, the group stage or something. And it's uh, it's a matchup that both of, both of them are just going to be kind of bleeding each other constantly. Particularly uh, the Pango, anytime he puts damage on the Primal Beast, he starts getting those, uh, those stacks up. I mean, Primal Beast is the alpha dinosaur in this game. So I, I favor him a little bit. Yeah. He, he can dominate with the, you know, the uproar stacks and that type of deal with the trade. But obviously Pango shouldn't really die in this lane unless you're super aggressive. I mean, it kind of takes me back to that Spear Breaker Primal Beast lane. Yeah. Where it's like, if you charge, you charge on cooldown, he runs you down, right? Yep, yep. But Pango does have multiple spells to at least cause a little bit of a gap. And then when the Primal Beast wants to make some of those early rotations, I mean, we saw even starting the last chance qualifier, the way Thompson would, he would move around pre-level six to some of these side lanes. Look for that Pango, who is a little bit more reliant on hitting his ultimate, but he's just a great counter initiator, right? I mean, was it Fly who said he just constantly is gonna try and follow the Primal Beast in the Vistage wherever they try and put pressure on the map? Yeah, you just need to check nine in this game. Just don't give him like some free rune into a bottom rotation that breaks the drow lane. Yeah. That's the lane secret really want to think about. Like the Primal Beast going top for a pair blade, who really cares? It doesn't progress the game for Tundra. Sure. Primal Beast going bottom, killing your drow, breaking this lane open, giving Visage extra levels to get the six, that will break this game open. So that is the one big move secret need to think about. And if they can make this bottom lane go a bit better for them, it's also going to help that. Nice damage coming out. God, Visage hurts, man. 
Yeah, he certainly does. His little clashes back and forth. You can see a bunch of 100% win rates on some of these heroes. The Primal Beast for nine. Now also Zayats on the uh, Nyx Assassin, also 100%. Isha going for a little bounty rune steal. Nine says no, sir. <laughs> I am the beast. You may be mobile, but uh, you're not going to go farther than that onslaught can take the primal beast. And puppy getting chased off lane a little bit. Second meta pop pop. There's another one. Puppy even on the sounds. Uh, I mean, nine is dominating the lane in terms of uh, the resource advantage, right? And that's why, like, if he ever forces Pango to base, suddenly the map opens up for him a lot, too. Yeah. Level five to six timings just become crazy strong. He's dominating the resources, but not so much the CS. Nope. Nisha doing very well in that regard. 19 and three. There's a few more creeps available. Zion's getting caught inside the cogs. 33 throws out the big nuke. Spy Carapace has already burned through, so Zion's is going to be run down underneath the trees. The One battery hit. sold the last couple of ticks. Not okay. quite enough, and 33 couldn't get the final shot off either. Damn. So, the first blood still available for the taking. Oh, he was gone for sure there, but just enough stick charges, holds it to the last minute, bogs him up as well. I mean, that's a huge play on this lane. Like, he gets the trade off first drought. Now they can turn around as well, both side lanes. Well, there's an opportunity, Resolution blood. swinging through Snake and getting that kill, and 33 almost dying on the other side of the map as well. So once again, the side lane's not doing too badly for Secret, though they certainly are not... Uh, Actually, it's not doing too bad. I mean, 33 sitting at 12 and 5. Maybe not quite the same as the way they shut out that Rude Mother, but it did seem to come up with good ideas on how to deal with 33 zeros in lane. I mean, I think this lane is going to get better for Secret in a way. Like, the early level 1 through 3 is where this vision shines in terms of getting you with all in kill. Sure. It didn't get that, which means Crystallis gets the... You know, just pull up the extra items. He doesn't have to spend as much on regen. He doesn't have to Trying to go for the deny. Pops a fairy fire last second. Right, Stankies. He held on to the Crystal Nova. Now they do have socks. Uh, the arrows flying through. Fell a little shy, though. Once again, the support's walking out of this bottom lane. Just a sliver of HP. Meanwhile, Nisha and Nine, they have indeed been clashing quite a bit, both of them, going down to about a quarter of their HP. But Nisha... He gets a bottle refill, whereas Nine doesn't have that same privilege. Yeah, so Nine actually ends up being the one forced to base here, and Puppy will spend his death wisely, refill that bottle. I mean, he was kind of playing off the lane a lot top, just choosing to drag some creeps. Uh, Skier was doing an amazing job of keeping the illusion on him, which was super annoying and resulted in the kill. The benefit for Secret is this Dawnbreaker is going to have a pretty fast six. Like, he's already level five, and speaking of ultimates... Nisha does have his here. ultimate, but Nine, he timed it perfectly! He was level five in like three quarters, but he knew as he cleaved through those creeps, he's gonna get his level six, and he gets the kill. A Love huge nice solution. <laughs> that is twice now he's managed to pull that off. Yeah, this guy is just piecing it up on the lane, this taking it straight to him. Radiance middle tower. You are gonna have this rolling thunder when you come up, but I don't know if there's a huge amount he can do with it in terms of moving. And Thunder's already moving this beast bottom, so it, if this Pango TP's back mid, you lose your counterplay ability, which is exactly what's gonna happen. Nine just reading Comes the charge, perfect. Crystalis can't get out of the way fast enough. Doesn't have the silence, so no force movement to try and stop this Primal Beast. And this is the five minute catapult still alive bottom for them as well. Again, Pango has to TP mid because of that kill. This tower can just take a huge amount of damage here. Nine might choose to stay around a little. He's gonna go back towards mid for XP. But Underneath his shot. own tower here. Nisha, not wasting any time, couldn't get off the freeze there. And so with this rollout, should be able to easily collect the kill on the Skeeter. So trading out the carries this time, uh, at least when it comes to the top lane, Snaking is gonna be the plus one. And well, plus two for Puppy. Thanks to the intelligence seal, Crystal Baby, you talked about her mana problems earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna face the same difficulty. Gotta get the mantles up. The yeah, seriously. Extra bit. I mean, this move was super nice for Nisha. I, I think this move actually converted a lot more for Secret than the early Primal Beast just because that Visage was in six. Yeah. That move will get the Visage to six, but this move just ends up in a dead tier one here. Terrorblade has to go jungle. Will plant his own obs. Nice from Skeeter. And meanwhile, Zayat's getting XP on mid. So a decent sequence here from Secret to strike back. Crystallis gets to stay bottom. He's not getting forced out just yet, though now with Visage 6, he'll probably make the rotation. Of course, the tier one dying top means he has more space to operate in. So now when he gets kicked out, he actually has somewhere to go. 
So that move is super valuable for Secret in terms of how they're going to play the map here. Do they have anybody who can continue to hold that tower against the Visage, or is this just long lost? Does Secret just not even look to the bottom part of the map anymore? I mean, you do have Dawnbreaker, all right? You can throw this Solar Guardian in on some random hero down there. It's just, I don't think it's going to be enough damage to kill the Radiant's Visage, and then you're stuck down here battling the birds with heroes that don't really want to battle them Radiant just yet. Sure. See, that's like Nisha's duty this game. When he feels strong enough to combat this Visage, fight through with the swashbuckles with whatever item he wants to go. Attack. I think it's when Secret really want to take the skirmishes. They can defend it with him though, because you have that Solar Guardian backup. Like, if Nisha wants to stay down here and stall this push, it's very viable. So it's just a question of whether or not Secret feels like the risk is worth the potential reward of stalling out 33 any longer, or if they're going to get drug into a fight against that the Visage that they're not ready attack. for. It seems like they have made the call. Nisha's going to be hanging around this bottom lane, so it's a possibility still. I, mean, I think it's fine to send him down here. Like, he'll still farm a decent amount. Sure. You're going to stall this Visage up a little. At the same time, if you get XP on one of your supports mid, remember these two secret supports, it's a pretty slow and greedy support duo. Yes. Silencer Nyx, you need a lot of levels on these guys, and ideally some basic items too. Hello, Zoxa. Didn't actually punish him there at all. Zayat's uh, not ready to go with the Impale. Oh, double damage Primal Beast. That is scary, but resolution, he's pretty tanky. They're gonna follow him here. Can he get the hammer away? No, he's definitely gonna be stuck here in this position. The manager to dodge the hammer stun, but there is gonna be Nisha rolling through. Onslaught over to the side here. Nine trying to get out. He does not want to fight into the pango, but Nisha has hunted him down. They're gonna keep him chain stunned up against the wall. A fourth kill for Team Secret. And fourth intelligence for Puppy. Every little mana pool adds up, and especially versus a hero who's pretty small to begin with, right? Yeah, absolutely. So a nice counter kill from Secret. Again, Nisha just reading the map. If this Primal Beast is going to play aggressive, he can turn those around. He'll always kill him on the return. That area is just so deep for Tundra, right? Like, yeah, part of the map. The tier one's still there. Secret can instantly respond. The trade will be that tower bottom. The downside of Pango, he can't be everywhere in this game, right? Yep. But I think he's had a fantastic early game. I think Nisha, he's done enough to propel him into a pretty solid mid game here. Will go that Diffusal Blade. Now you have that deadly combination of, you know, stealing some intelligence. <laughs> That's true. Burning your mana at the yep. same time. BKB costs mana now, Cap. Yeah, I mean, that arcane ring is going to be pretty important, <laughs> I feel like, for sneaking. Just to keep that mana pool of both himself and others nice and high. Zions with the first move here of the Vendetta. You have the Nyx mana burn too later. Oh, that's true. Mana burn synergy. Where is he headed to? I don't think he really has the power to do anything about the Visage. He can hit him and impale him and they can follow up with the Dawnbreaker, but... No, he, he wants know. to find Terrorblade in one of these jungles or just a free support kill. You do have the Donald that can come in on any of these Vendettas. Yeah. He's just walking over Sentry Ob and Tundra doing a nice job of warding up the map, keeping the vision. They have a very good Observer wards up at the moment. Pretty much seeing everything they want to see here. Yeah, seriously. Four different wards. This one's super deep in the mid lane. They've got a defensive one. They've got two up top as well. I mean, just beautiful the vision Knicks. in this game overall. Like, even the secret wards. Super nice. Oh, yeah. They've got a nice little triangle surrounding that straight up triangle. Tundra is actually clearing through ancient stacks, which apparently there was a number of them there. So drops the freezing field. Nine will help with the trample. Take a page out of Puppy's book there. Do a little yeah, five well, position well, farming. Well, farm top. never heard of Tundra five. Top. You guys should take that up in your pubs. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> How are the levels looking for secrets? That's Zion's a big question. Because this Nick's got a lot of levels, but Puppy is still level five. He is suffering. Yeah. This global silence is pretty much nowhere near to coming out. Trying to get some vendetta hit. Ooh, they didn't even go for the vendetta hit. They may run out of damage as a result. The hook shot comes in from the side, stopping the rolling thunder. But even then, I mean the primal beast just looked way too tanky there. I feel if anything, they were just baiting out some reaction. I mean, they got this yeah. visage teleport, they got a hook shot. Alright, back to farming, right? Remember, this is a drow liner for secret. Like, traditionally, Drow lineups, you're aiming for some pretty later timings, right? This is not a hero that, I mean, this hero can join the fights early and be super happy to clean him up, but she's also pretty happy to just keep farming ancient stacks, getting the levels. Every level in this hero counts for a lot in terms of how her ult works, so... So much of Drow's impact, though, going into that later game is whether or not she's able to just freely hit people uh, without, you know, stuff being in the way and, and negating that uh, ultimate of hers. 
Do you think that's why? I mean, we have Primal Beast, we have Clockwork. There does seem to be a decent number of heroes to get on top of this Drow Ranger, or is that not enough in your mind? Yes, yeah, Solar Guardian Global Nyx to bail him out. Here's the first connect with that chain stun. Yeah, they're gonna use this nicely. Nisha said, okay, you guys take 33. I trust you got it. I'm actually gonna go for the plus one here. Snake King showed himself, and Resolution with the hammer will claim the double. Bittersweet sunset for you. Very nice double kill for them. This is the type of tempo I think Seeker wants to play. Just finding the kills when their ults are up every 70, 80 seconds or so. Connect with a Vendetta, connect with a Rolling Thunder. Back to farming for Stalls, gets to clear Triangle, he gets to clear Top Wave. Puppy finally trying to get to his level six up here. Inching towards it with every CS, so <laughs> yeah. Seeker pretty much getting what they want on all their heroes during this time. And every time Visage dies, you're also extremely happy because it sets down the tempo on the map, right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, the 100 doesn't have this flat, they don't have this rate pack that they're getting to that's gonna exist in the space and be occupying your mindset. And we saw snaking. <laughs> he went arcane boots, man. This guy is also thinking all about right. it. I'm telling you, he does not want to run out of mana in this game. No. Go for a four staff next, which is certainly going to help out a lot against. I mean, they have so much where the Rolling Thunder on in with the Dawnbreaker ultimate on top of that. They want to be able to get people out of these AOE stuck situations where they're chain stunned. Yeah, Tundra almost always buy double four staff. It is yeah. 90% of their games, they like to be able to reset fights, save people. I mean, the Arcane Boots is another form of save this game, right? If you Arcane Boots or Terrorblade, like Arcane Boots, your Primal Beast, you might get Sunder off, you might get that Onslaught off. All of a sudden, that counts as a reset. The Tundra always thinks about these itemizations in terms of how they can prolong the fight for their cores and just get multiple rounds of spells off. That's where their lineup shines. What do you make of the Bale, though? Soxa has that four staff. He's definitely going the double, but he also has the Veil queued up. I mean, if there's one team that's gonna buy Veil, yeah. the AUI team. I mean, <laughs> this guy's been buying Veil for uh, almost a decade here. This item is efficient. Like, you get the mana region, you get some aura. It produces a significant amount of damage increase in the early fights. The question I always have with this item is if you don't get the early fights, does it feel that good going into the later game, especially versus BKB cores or cores that jump you on the backline, right? Because it isn't as much survivability, it isn't as much tank ability in those later durations. Dyer's so to me, this tells me, again, Tundra want to hit a like 20 to 25 minute timing here where the spell damage is just going to be too much for Secret to deal with. It is kind of interesting, though, because they're matched up against two cores that can go magic immune. Yes. You know, we're going to have that Dawnbreaker. Ah, it's about the opening. The Rolling That's Thunder is on top of it. The chain stun, here it is. No opportunity for a Sunder. Now they back up through, but the hookshot is on in from Soxa. Now Puppy. The rest the of the team of Secret is going to come they through. They managed to get off the global ever so barely. And look at Chrysalis. He's just standing and delivering on that high ground. Now they come back in with Nisha from behind. They almost claimed the kill on a Snake King, but now he's been grabbed by the Primal Beast. He needs to jump away. The Swashbuckle gets him a little bit of distance, burning through the mana of nine. He's got a lot of sick charges. Nisha actually Taste with the Haste Rune is running around. He spotted Snake King. Hey, look at him. Ah, you're not getting away from this one. He knew it too, even with the high five taunting Snake King into his death. 33 chase downs done into one. And now they've got Crystalis to clean up the kill just like you want any drow ranger to go everybody else is engaging and the drow ranger is sitting in the back throwing out the physical damage and collecting in the kills echo saver timing for rezo doing a lot of work there as well and that's a huge amount of levels for this seeker lineup that uses them amazing of course haste rune on nisha he is just doing the best pango dance of his life cleaning up the back of the fight gets a huge shield crash off as well just taking so much up and all that was started with this terribly pick right this yep. is the exact target they want to find with this Solar Guardian Nyx Vendetta combo. It's going to be deadly for Skeeter all game. It'll bypass the vision that was such an issue for Secret last time. Nyx doesn't care if you have wards. He doesn't care if you have the Terrorblade Illusions because you cannot sentry everywhere. That's going to give him a window to start a lot of these engagements with the core down. And just beautiful team fight execution here. Again, the Carapace messing with these heroes, the mana burn in these early fights. Doing a decent amount of work. And Nisha just... Playing with him, man. Put the I, high five up at the end. See you later. <laughs> yeah, he's feeling himself. Even after a game one loss, Nisha showing that he does not lack in confidence on the main stage here. I want to point out the fact the Wraith Pact was alive. That entire fight. That yep. cannot feel good for Tundra that they're, they recently picked up this item. If they used it to the full extent of its abilities and they still lost. It's very true. Zayas, you got to be careful. Oh, 33. Drops a few yes. first. <laughs> Narrowly escapes that vision. He was really close to just dying there. He has full wand, but that was Radiant's a bold move. Tower is under attack. Very bold. Indeed. Maybe just about as bold as Nine, who was thinking about Puppy showed, maybe diving in and trying to get a quick kill and get out. 
pretty hard to out farm this tundra team but i do feel like secret they have a decent advantage right now in terms of the actual five on five outside of that raid pack they have their diffusal they have their echo saber solar guardians pretty powerful for giving you the numbers advantage this visage he's top you know if, if you find an opportunity to get a five on four a three on two some of these number fights with the vendetta global ability secret's gonna take those every time because they have global to back it up as well Maybe part of this fail on the clock is also Soxa just trying to find Puppy in this game. That is his MO. Yeah. Find the silencer, hook him. If you veil him, maybe it gives you the extra damage to just kill him faster or solo kill him even. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Especially Dine's going to follow up. He onslaughts and tramples through. Like, that's that's, that's one-shot territory damage. for sure. And now they have Dine. Dine's now the opening. They have the Rolling Thunder as well. The Dawnbreaker. Tundra did not see this one coming fast enough, but they do have in that back line. Skeeter has popped the meta, so Secret needs to be able to reset a little bit, especially with Soxa getting on top of the Drow Ranger, making it even worse. Puppy's gonna get grabbed. The two supports of Secret die, despite the fact that Secret are the ones finding the initiation. It's Tundra who gets the better of the engagement, and as a result, can maybe take this mint out. I mean, just beautiful hook shock to the back line disrupts the whole fight. Nisha's going on this visage, but it's not really the target he wants to start on, especially if it's just him. Like, you're basically just wasting Rolling Thunder at that point. They can't come through and turn that fight around post-BKB or post-Terrorblade initiation. And Skeeter joining pretty nice. Yasha timing along with that Mithril Hammer, just dealing a decent amount of damage and clean up two kills into a tower. That's the type of fight Tundra wants to be able to take. Visage tanks the initiation. Terrorblade gets a free fight. Nisha just going into all That is a shield crash on two, but I don't think it's enough to save him from this sticky situation. Not sure what he was expecting there, but it was certainly not three heroes from Tundra. I think he just wanted an easy bounty rune, but nothing. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is easy on the TI main stage cap. No, certainly not against Tundra who have been, they really have not given much ground to secret in either of these games. This game's a lot about BKB timings as well. Who can just commit in the fights and get the damage done during those intervals? We will have BKB flying out for resolution here. So he's okay. pretty strong in a TP top. Radiant of course, he can TP to these lanes no one else wants to go to. Still join the team. It's a decent time for Seeker to try and find something. Remember, Meta has been down for this as well. 50 seconds. Skeeter does not want to join a fight. Rezo just pushing in here. They're gonna spot him. Gonna get off his BKB in time. He's gonna off. be changed on here. Beautiful oh, combo it. from Tundra. Nine and Soxa not overlapping there at all. Very nicely played. Uh, that's the bail amp. Like, yeah, that's true. In there for that bail. So this extra burst, have to try and account for it. Now Secret is willing to fight here. They have a blink on Pango. Oh, this is, it's gonna be revealed though. Off the rolling thunder. Pretty, just try and slow them down. They're going in pretty deep for this one. I'm not sure if the rest of the team really wants to follow this one up. They're going to try it with the Impale, but here comes the Primal Beast running over the Nyx and Sats in the first use of the BKB. And of course, they got to get out. Leave their supports behind. They are fodder in the face of a Tundra team. Oh, that last little arrow, and now this Visage. Though they do have Skeeter coming in from the side. The meta pops out. He does Gust, pushing over the side. Ooh, Saksa, that's an awkward Cox blocking Skeeter from his retreat, nice jumping click. back in. Nisha claims the kill onto 33. Now Rezo's with the resolution back. closing in here, they can throw out the stun. Skeeter's gonna pop his BKB. Do they and have their own BKB? Needs to get off the stun. He gets it off on Sasa. Turns around and kills the Drow Ranger. A beautiful play, but the young man on stage that is gonna be able to claim two core kills. Zayat's looking to find something, but... He's under attack. There's just not much to claim. Skeeter back up the full HP here. Nine full resources as well. Impale off the mark. And, and with that miss, <laughs> no, 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 nine no, not, not, not that crazy. It. Oh, that was almost a nice Terrorblade kill. Saw Rezo manning up. He was chunking him down, but just getting in that Sunder range. Enough to repel him back Radiant's up the fold. Skeeter has done a very nice job of joining these fights at the right time and in the right place to get a decent position. That said, Nisha is really carrying this early game. Like, he is doing so much oh, of the yeah. damage these early engagements, going in, going out, trying to bait out the spells. This global is not really what Pumpy wants out of the spell, right? Like, he's getting no. trampled down during a global. Doesn't feel amazing. Imagine they have that later on because he can survive, but the long range damage is considerable here for the secret lineup. You get swashbuckled, you get hit by this drow, you have some silencer dots on you. Look at this play from Nisha blinking back in to claim that Visage kill. I mean, that, that was, was massive. But Skeeter. First is pretty close. 
the BKB and the attention to put it on to Soxa to give him the most HP rather than the Drow Ranger. Very nice. Very, Very nice heads up. Plays. Skeeter, I mean, he's not had a long career. He started off, I mean, he first learned about Dota during TI2 when he was still in elementary school. He was watching pro gamers on stage, and that was the first time apparently that he learned you could play video games for money. He said, that's what I want to do. And here he is he's in the upper him. bracket final yeah, for the most amount of money, he's man. Playing him for a little bit of money. <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. This gamer thing work, is working out all right for him. Yeah, he seems to be doing just okay. Hook shot. Soxa killing the creep, chaining the stun there with the cogs, but the rest of the team, they called it off. They said, this is not the fight that we want. Soxa says, okay, thanks guys. <laughs> I'll see you later. Just splitting the map, snaking, trying to do a little- Oh, the roll up. Work. Hey, forces something out of him. Forces two ultimates, in fact, snaking this. I mean, he dies, he doesn't get a kill, but did get a lot out of secret in a way. I think Secret, like I said though, I think Secret is happy to play this tempo where they get these kills. Like 40 seconds on the sideline for a 100 second ult. Not the worst, right? Yeah. To me, this is Tundra waiting out this meta time. They really want to take the fights with Terrorblade this game. They need his manpower in the engagement. Sure, Visage survives for a while. Primal B survives for a while, maybe kills the support. But the fights where Skeeter joins is really the ones where they want to clean up and get the conversion into the objectives. Next one being Roshan here. He has full Hurricane Pike, so you can get pretty aggressive in these engagements. Just Hurricane piking in, metting, taking the fight to this drow if she gets caught. Would expect Sundra to group up, probably try and smoke for some sort of good fight with Vision. Very soon here. Get the right kind of fight, take Roche. Snaking, he's just gonna teleport in. On cue. Okay. Here it comes. Smoke everybody but Skeeter. Let him show somewhere. Send illusions down the lanes. I mean, with the BKB and an Agative Scepter on nine, this Primal Beast is so scary when he goes in. Look, it's pop. He's gonna break. Drop the Sentry. Doesn't catch Zayats fast enough. They're gonna threaten the Roche though, and Secret need to think about whether Tundra's committing to this. They don't have an easy way to get Vision in that pit. That is super awkward. I Means somebody kind of has to put their life on the line to get that information. It's a fine game. It turns into a free pick, perhaps, especially now with the ward going down. The situation is going to be very awkward, especially when the enemy team has ways to force you to show elsewhere. Similar to that last game, Skeeter, he's on an illusion hero. His job is just be super obnoxious with these illusions, shove the waves that Secret doesn't want to go to. Yeah, but if they find this initiation, I mean, Skeeter. This could be the best hero they can find. Okay, they, they're not going to be able to get a fast initiation for it. Ooh! The roll up. Is he going to be able to get off anything here? Nisha is just dead. Immediately, the physical damage overwhelms him, and now Zayat is going to be chased down. They spotted him. They're going to pop the drums, chase him down. They've got the slow, and that should be it for our Nyx assassin. He's got a vendetta up in a second, but I'm sure they have detection, even if he tries for it. She does not hold on to that spell for now. That's kind of awkward because they're running into the BKB carry. Yeah. I don't know how Secret would be able to chain stuff. It would have to take. They needed vision over the Terror Blade, I guess. I mean, I think they're just hoping to force a reaction, maybe get out. If they find another core who doesn't have BKB, they're happy to take that fight with the Solar Guardian Global. At, at least they got this meta out on a good portion of the map, right? It prevents Skeeter from just instantly going to Roche with meta. That said, he did have a TP up. That was the tieback for the Nyx, so he was dead for 70. It's gonna give a decent window here for Tundra to just clean it up without that meta. Now you're in a position where you can test this as your secret in. I mean, how do you even get tested? There's no way without Pango. It's gonna be very close here, but not close enough. Radiant yeah, I mean, I love the fight. The Tundra recognizes we don't have the meta, so we need to throw all the damage we have right now, and they're gonna do it just in time before Nisha could get into the pit with that Rolling Thunder and disrupt things and cause a bunch of chaos. So, I mean, Great read by Tundra. They, they got that timing down to a T. Fast plays when you games. Yep. Making every second count here. That's going to be Aegis was terribly. Makes it even attack. scarier in these engagements. And Ag's done for nine. So his Primal Beast damage is starting to ramp up. Mm -hmm. The initiation, though. Nisha, the they had the double. vision to be able to get the opening. The Drow Rage is going to get run over, though. Nine, popping his uh, axe, but he has to chase in real deep for this one. Can anyone bail him out? He's just getting trampled to death. Somebody help Crystal. It pops me at the last second, but nine grabs him in the end, there is pulls no him down. Here. Now, underneath that tier two, I mean, he's fast. Can he get away, though? No, nope. the final swashbuckle gets him in the end, but they get drug in a little bit deeper. Zayat, he's going to be chased down on the side here at the same time. 33 is kind of toying with them, trying to bait Secret into going for more, but they will not get baited. 33 just... 
straight up throws damage onto the tier two, saying, you guys can't fight right now. Force stabbed aggressively, force stabbed in, force stabbed back in the line, but Resolution cleaves out the support. The stone for him gives him a little bit of time. Nisha, he's got to keep his distance here. That's Sunder. Tigger can keep poking here. They can. Can they actually keep them in place, though? Slowed down by the curse and the hammer. Nisha comes in through the side. The shield crashes there. Whoa! There goes that visage. There goes it's the raid pack. <laughs> as soon as the cloak is gone. Damn, this poke and physical burst is ramping up for Secret Desolator on Resolution. She's doing a huge amount of work in these engagements. You get the proc on any hero, throw the swashbuckle on top. Yeah, only it's a decent amount of minus armor coming your way. I mean, Rezo is the carry right here. You know, it really is. Going back to his days with uh, the multiple TI runs here. Not unfamiliar territory for him. Yeah, I mean, I always think of when it comes to resolution and carrying on the main stage, I always think back to that time we stood in for Team Empire and uh, I mean, his performances at that TI were incredible. I mean, he's 9 1 and 7, level 20. It's the highest level in the game. Down. Yeah. Awesome. Having a beautiful game here. Shard online, Echo build back up after the BKB disassemble. Less luminosity attacks required. Like, he is going to shred these Tundra supports if he gets on them. Crystal Mate basically just gets Starbreaker into oblivion. Skeeter needs to use his BKB timing well. If this fights go really long and Secret still have the manpower up. I feel like this is not the same situation as last game where Tundra can stall the fights out super long and just benefit from the Astrals and the tossbacks and the arrows. Yeah. This is more you gotta commit with your Terrorblade, get the damage done and make sure it counts. At the same time though, while Rezo's having this amazing game, we saw in the last fight, Crystalis, because he still doesn't have BKB, he's just being soloed by a single hero. I mean, Nine is so farmed in this Primal Beast that he's just able to trample him down. Yeah, it makes you wish he had two four staffs, right? Yeah, that's true. Maybe that is the key of the game. I mean, Puppy has one. He's building Glimmer as well. Any extra mobility you give your Drow. Very nice, nice hook shot. Hook shot off of that, but it does give an opportunity for Nisha to get off the Rolling Thunder if he wanted to. A global silence from Puppy, though. It is something expended. Yeah, Skeeter's looking to go in here. Still has ages Not about it. Skeeter's chasing Puppy with the eye of Scotty. Pretty Slow tanky, down actually. to a crawl. He is pretty tanky, and they actually can't finish him off somehow. The hell, he has like 26 armor. Yeah, I mean, the tier two, I guess that armor aura was maybe just enough to keep him alive. He just walks it off. Well, now meta has been used, and the Aegis is going to expire in a minute and a half. There's going to be timing here for Secret. I mean, it was the marksmanship. It's giving him all the extra bonus, Hatchy. Yeah. So this oh. silencer's a lot more tanky than you think. Oh, that's interesting. I think Skier thought he was going to, like, three-shot him. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I have a Sven shard or something? Yeah. <laughs> now Secret have an opportunity to abuse the meta cooldown here. Smoke up from Puppy. Wants to try and initiate with this Nisha Pango. Either find the back line. I'm surprised they're going right okay. now. But maybe it's just, like, meta's down. It doesn't matter if he's Meta's got Aegis. down. Aegis running out in 50. They want to find some initiation with the Solar Guardian on top. They're not quite close enough. Puppy, the smoke is going to break. Tundra on high alert, up on a high ground. Really good timing from them. They backed out at the right time. They read, you know, hey, even if we've got this Aegis, we're still exposed. When meta, whenever meta is down, we have to play defensive. Going up just to the high ground. Outpost. Or he canceled that. That was a aggressive outpost TP, I was about to say. I was wondering where he was TPing to. Uh, let's see if we'll take it back. You said Tundra, I mean, this team is just so efficient at playing the map. They have an 8k lead. It really doesn't feel like they have that much, but they, it's just all on their supports. These yeah. supports just always get farmed. Snaking up the four staff and, I mean, Soxa sitting on the big boy Philly. Oh, yeah, and he's going to get the Agatum Scepter soon, which means one of the side benefits of the Agatum Scepter is the constant rocket spam that you get. So that's another aspect of split push that Tundra will have. They always got something. He can split push the lanes. He can throw the vision in the fight to find the silencer. Yep, make it annoying for this Pango who wants to hide in trees. Yeah, he's just going to pick it up by out for it. Tundra collecting a lot of the map right now. Look at them again. This deep vision they have in the mid lanes has, I think, given them a heads up that this is happening. Now, they're going to lose their Crystal Maiden, but that is really not that important. Tundra are pretty happy with losing their five if it means another smoke is down on the side of Secret. They're okay with this for now. And Okay, I was gonna say Skeeter had a he had a sacred relic in his bat in his inventory. <laughs> a little early for divine there, son, but of course nullifier coming out. It's gonna be nice to to dispel these secret cores in the fight. No more four staff for the drow at a time where he might really need it, right? Yeah, sure. 
also messes with Pango. So interesting itemization here from Skeeter. Again, I think Tundra's identifying they want to make the most happen in the interval where they get the clockwork quick shot, they get that initiation, and this meta is all cooldown. Especially for the next Roshan fight. This is what both teams are gearing up for. Of course, Secret, they do have like triple core lineup that scales incredibly well here. Do you think the nullifier is, is really the best item for it? I mean, I mean, it felt like there was a lack of damage here. I would expect maybe more like I think the, a pure Daedalus route or something. I think the nullifier becomes very good when you get to that swift one. Okay. Which is what he's yeah. thinking about, right? He has a Q right. the next. I don't think you go with the nullifier without getting a blink somewhere in your inventory. Yeah. Because what you really want to do is be able to just blink on the trowel, nullify, Scotty hit him. He's gone, right? He yeah, has to sure. sit there and man fight you, and it, it sets up the fight very nice for the team. Same with, like, the Silencer. I mean, we saw the Silencer tanky. It takes a little bit. Nullifier just helps you cement these kills. Tundra wanting to use it here. Shiva's completed for nine. They found the ward now. <laughs> they may back up just at the right time. So now Secret, they have a gem as well. Uh, earlier, Tundra, and again, they buy these really early gems, which I'm a big fan of. Tundra, as soon as they feel like they're kind of like, all right, we're definitely stronger than these guys, they pick up the gem and they just take over the map. I mean, no vision left. Yeah. Absolutely debilitating for these secret lineups that need to fight around it. Maybe a big reason why they're able to get such a big net worth lead. Always helps. I mean, Syad's game is just not easy. No. And he just doesn't want to run up any of these high grounds. The illusions are constantly shoving in, which forces someone from his team to go somewhere else. Scan up to the high ground, see if they can get into position to get this ward down. Stalls is like leading the, the charge here, you know? Yeah, you know, he's like, he's got a fresh BKB. He's like, I don't have to be scared any longer. The one upside compared to last game is you can put resolution on illusion duty and you can still join the fight. Yes. So you, your ability to play the map versus the illusions went up considerably. And it means that he's getting a ton of farm in the meantime, too. He's still actually ahead of Chrysalis in that regard. Yeah, you know, these secret cores are farm. I'm just worried that they go in. Tundra is just hitting so many good timings on their heroes here. The double four staff done, the Ags on the clockwork, Shiva's Ags on this Primal Beast, and 33 pushing towards an Assault Kuros. That is like the huge armor differential gone, right? Yeah. AC, Buckler, all these things, huge versus Drow. Now they're opening a Torque Staff, push them deeper into Secret. Maybe that's not what they wanted. At the same time, Nine, well, he tried to go in, and that initiation didn't feel good either. So Tundra is now on full out retreat. The roll up, Nisha gonna be able to deal with the frostbite. Can he get out though? He's gonna be grabbed by Nine. Swashbuckle over the side. There goes the Crystal Mate. Nice two man stun as well from the Nix Assassin. A four step in and once again in the Terror Blade. Triple crit. kill for Chrysalis. Turns over to Nine, who had to deep commit in order to finally finish up that Pangolier. No stuns in time. The BKB lasted long enough. Puppy. Oh, no, got him just in time. Zayat finds a fourth kill for Old Crystalis. Kill. He wanted that rampage for the books, but damn close. And Secret clean up four, only losing the Pango there. Very happy to get that trade. The gem will be rescued here. But oh, I, they saw that on the ground, but Tanking yeah, got his courier, courier out fast enough to be able to recover that gem. So that's quick fingers on the couriers from this Tundra side. They really do. They Salvaging know how to play bit. with every single unit they have but in I their mean, control. That is the exact fight Seeker wanted to hit. They got some vision out. They yep. tank it, the initiation with the Pango. The global was beautiful. It separates the fight and of course, can't ask for a better time. Getting that into the second Roche here. Aegis on Drow is a huge deal. This damage is starting to come through for this Terrorblade. I thought that was an aggressive war stab from Secret at first. I was but like, it was oh, <laughs> that was nice, but it was yeah. Tundra trying to save him from the chain stun, which you can't blame them. But it ends up just pushing him so deep, and then Nisha on the back line. Secret just get the dream fight here, right? Drow gets to just shoot Terrorblade the whole time. He gets forced in again, maybe betraying a little bit here. He just gets bursted by resolution with the minus armor. Drow to back him up. And these, this Tricor coming online for Secret here, the physical damage is no joke. If Terrorblade dies, these other two cores are not going to carry the, the huge distance in that fight in terms of the damage output. Like, yeah. this is a Terrorblade draft. You are buffing him, but you want him to live through that engagement. And at this point, Rezo and Crystallis might just be out carrying him. The tag team here, that's a fake swing. He's no longer going the Swift Blank. Now he is going back for the Daedalus. Now he's saying the damage is the problem, but I did like your your uh, idea yeah, of like yeah. it, a, a certain way to play against the Drown Ranger because in just a normal game, this one-to-one -one matchup between Drow and TV is not that fun. I mean, I, this Nullifier, it makes a lot of sense this game. It helps them stick on targets, but at the same time, he has to aggressively force them to be able to stick on them. 
if someone gets forced before you get that nullifier hit out, it gets kind of weird, right? Yeah. Like, traditionally, if you want to go this Daedalus build, maybe you rather have Satanic, something else, even like a Manta Dispel. Butterfly opportunity. I mean, he's still going to be incredibly strong here. If he gets the nullifier hit, it's going to pay off. Just a question of can he land it? How deep does he go in the fight? Because like we saw there, you go a little too deep, you get Starbreaker. You're not living through that. Now, Secret taking the fight to them, pushing his tower with Aegis. Smoke it all comes around, down though. to the initiation, but Science, he reads it. He's going to be able to break that smoke. The onslaught on through. They do have the spike care base. Pop the BKB last second. They managed to get on top of the Silence as well. The Global Silence goes out. Science is not dead yet, nor is Puppy. While Chris is delivering the damage on his Skeeter, forced that forward. Managed to get the hook shot. Turn around. Skeeter gets off the Sunder on his support. Manta gets popped. Crystal is trying to walk away, but that nullifier, it'll keep him in place. Another and now Nine is setting up for the Starbreaker, no though. Resolution. He barely hits the end one, and that's all he needed. Chrysalis on the second line will stand and deliver the damage on to nine. That'll finish him up. The Primal Beast with the Dispel is not going to be enough to walk away. Give me your intelligence, mother. And I'll take it every time. Puppy with the buyback Ooh. to get the extra insteal. And runs down Snake King. Resolution take finds an extra one on top of that. None of these heroes have buybacks. So secret. Oh. The world is their oyster at this point. I mean, this time. game has swung completely, right? Like we yes. can feel in these fights, the damage is just running out for Tundra. And the real carry in this game, Resolution, coming online. He hits 25 after this fight, which is a huge deal for this hero. Now you're dealing with double Dying Starbreaker, which have just been That's debilitating for oh, yeah. I mean, beautiful hook shot here. They get the Sunder off. Operation Safety to bail out Skeeter. Takes the fight to Crystallis. Maybe if there's no Aegis here, this fight looks different. But even so, Rezo is just smacking him. And that hammer hurts, man. Yes, it does. All of that farm is paying off. They're so focused on dealing with the Drow Ranger in this bad matchup with his Terror Blade that it means that Resolution is completely uncontested in fights. Delivering damage right there. There's man on stage who set all that up in the first place. His vendetta positioning, breaking that smoke. Oh, that was made an awkward initiation for Tundra. I mean, that's what wins Secret the fight there. Like, imagine Puppy gets broken on instead of that Nyx. It's mm -hmm. a completely different engagement. Instead, Nine has to spend his entire BKB duration and half that fight chasing Puppy around. He doesn't want to be doing this. It's 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 dirty duty. Someone has to, but yep. it takes him way longer than he wants. And uh, now Secret taking control of this game. Now they're scaling into that late game Tricore where Shiva's on Nisha on top of a Timeless Relic Arcane Rune. He's gonna be pretty strong in this next engagement. Huge amount of spell damage coming out. If Trow lives through the initial burst from Tuncha, it's gonna be a hard fight. Rocket player scouting Puppy. They're gonna go for that free kill. The and he had the gem too. Nisha's gonna try and follow this up though. They do have the Dawnbreaker ultimate coming in on the side. They're gonna chain stun down this visage. They've worked through the cloak. The double hammer goes to play. And Snakey will try to freeze the field. The They're getting on top of Chrysalis. This time around, he doesn't have that second line. Skeeter's got the meta. And they can start letting him the Drow Ranger. But they need to be able to get the disarms. And now with the chain stun going out, the Drow falls. Yes, but Resolution and Nisha, they are just cleaving through hero after hero. The Primal Beast again trying to walk Resolution. away. But Resolution, he'll run you down. He'll drag you down into the dark, down until you fall, down until you go all the way back to the fountain. Resolution, Starbreaker, breaking Tundra's dreams here, closing this out 2-0. He wants to send it to a game three. This man is absolute resolute. He really is, and it's so fitting. He showed up on this roster with Zayas, completely turns what was kind of a mediocre lineup for Team Seeker. They really did not find much success. It seems like this combination of science and resolution we see on the right hand side is what has been enough. It's a seeker ingredient that has turned secret into an absolute killing machine. It may just give them the chance to even up this series against Tundra, the upper bracket final. The seeker is just all over Skeeter in these fights. He just does not have the sustained health like last game. And they are able to burst this terribly down regardless of the crowd. And yeah, you love to see that, man. Harking back to a little bit of the TI1 days. Back then at their very first international, the boosts were closer together, much closer. They're face up against each other. Here at TI11, it feels like a similar vibe, and you could see Zayats, he loves that. Oh, especially when you're dead. There's nothing else to look at but that guy across the stage from you. He's standing up and shouting. Yep. Little extra mental mind games going down, and that's two lanes for Secret here. Cementing themselves at a 15k gold lead. They have to buy back. Tundra's probably gonna have to buy out to take these fights. Full control of this game now. Octarine done on Nisha. Aeon disc for Puppy. 
jumping him just became a little bit harder. I mean, now you really need to get back into this nullifier. You need it, but yeah, Skeeter's just getting kited, right? And even if he takes down one of these secret cores, pick your poison. Are you going Drought? Are you going Dawnbreaker? Yeah, somebody's got to deal with this Dawnbreaker, man. I almost feel like Nine uh, getting his level 25. I know most people go the, the extra duration, but I almost wonder if getting the BKB piercing disable would be better. Just deal with this Dawnbreaker who's like BKB and challenging the Terrorblade every time. It might be. Uh, if you can just get this Dawn off your Terrorblade, at least free him up a little bit or maybe burst him. I don't know how much it's doable, but you have to deal with resolution at this point. He's just cleaving through your entire team. I mean, he has Blink. He has everything up, pushing towards Strength Blink. In fact, he's saving for buyback. So even if you kill him once, he is going to buyback. He's going to Solar Guardian back in. This Dawnbreaker has built an Aegis here, as long as he wants to keep the gold up, which he will. Yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty cool idea because they're essentially just one team fight away from being able to finish off this game too. Yep. We'll see how Tundra is Gonna able to it. hold now that the shoe is on the other foot. Rocket's coming out, doesn't see anything. Skeeter might get caught. Oh, this would be the worst situation. Two man stun set up with the resolution. Ready to go. Both will fall. Both do have buyback, but there's going to be a third here on the ring. It's 33. Roll on through, stop the onslaught as well. Everything being countered on the side of oh, Secret. They've used their buybacks, but they're not even gonna be able to do much. Maybe they can. Knight jumps in, grabs the Drow Ranger, and they do manage to get him. Immediate buyback. Secret trying to reset around this one. A oh, beautiful no, stun from Science. Once again, another two-man follow-up. Nisha keeping his distance here with the swashbuckle. He's gonna roll up to the side. They're gonna try and deal with this Nyx Assassin. Go, Don Ranger coming, coming in. in. Here comes the stunts. Can they chain stun him? They burn down a mana. He needs to be able to get off a of Sunder, but he doesn't have an opportunity to do so. Burn he falls. A die back on the carry, but at the same time, oh, the Primal Beast went in, but they couldn't actually deal with the Drow Ranger, who's just in the back Resolution. line. Resolution. Throwing away the damage. Resolution. He will not go down easy. He will not go down without a fight. He finally does fall, but Tundra, it's too late for them. They blew far too much to be able to bring down the Dawnbreaker, and now Crystalis is here. Clean up. Right, they buy the back where they can. They do done. have the roll in coming on through. That's going to be able to get the chains done on to nine. He's dead as well. Three dead. No buybacks. 33. Got to be collected. And that is it. GG. Team Secrets. Monster they will strike close back. out this game too and even up the series. I mean, that's what everybody wants to see here. A game three between these two teams. And that, that felt like Secrets playbook through and through. Clinical yes. early to mid game, executing with their ults on the kills that they need to, a slower tempo, just methodically oozing the victory out of that game from Tundra. And it felt like Tundra were the ones kind of on a timer. Like they're trying to fight with this terribly timing, trying to get that meta to maximize the usage, but that one.